So I'm going to ask whether intrinsic incentives uh, matter more when we do the action than before or after. Uh, can we increase persistence on long-term goals? Can we uh, get people to do better on things that serve them in the long run by uh, considering intrinsic incentives for uh, pursuing these goals that consider immediate uh, rewards? Uh, and let me start just by uh, explaining some terms here. Pursuing uh, anything uh, uh, delivers some uh, uh, immediate uh, intrinsic incentives while we are doing it, and extrinsic and delayed incentives that define the, uh, the outcome of uh, what we are doing. We usually think about self-control conflict in terms of the conflict between doing something that is uh, pleasurable in the moment, like in the immediate uh, uh, intrinsic incentives versus doing something that is uh, good for me in the long run. However, we should also keep in mind that for most activities, both benefits occur. Okay? So for most of the things that we do, uh, we get some value at the moment and uh, uh, hopefully some uh, uh, delayed uh, uh, value uh, later on. As a matter of fact, it's hard for people to do something that delivers no immediate benefits at the moment, at least not for a long time. Uh, I also think that in the literature there is uh, a lot of overlap between uh, these concepts, <coughs> intrinsic versus extrinsic, immediate versus delayed, experiential versus instrumental, and internal versus external. We probably don't need all these uh, <coughs> concepts. Uh, just for you to be with me on the definitions, I refer to intrinsic or immediate incentives as what we get while we are doing that action, often is the experience, the positive experience, why we do something, the relaxing workout, uh, fulfilling a, a job, and so on, and extrinsic and delayed incentives as what is being delivered after something uh, has been uh, concluded, uh, getting to be uh, healthier as a result of working out, getting uh, some promotion uh, as a result of doing your job. And a few years ago, uh, we, we uh, found that uh, you can uh, get people to do things that are absolutely extrinsic by making those things uh, more exciting, okay? by uh, increasing, uh, increasing <coughs> intrinsic uh, uh, incentives. And uh, we actually found it when we were looking at the effect of uncertainty on uh, uh, motivation. And we found that uh, as people were working toward an uncertain reward, they were exerting greater motivation, they were more engaged in uh, uh, the action. In uh, this uh, uh, particular experiment, uh, we had people uh, climbing up the, the five uh, floors in our uh, building, and for uh, each one, they, they either got a certain uh, reward of 35 cents, another uh, condition had a certain reward of 50 cents, and then a third condition had uh, an uncertain reward, which was either 50 cents or 20 cents, and we uh, give them 15 minutes and simply look at the number of times that they uh, climb uh, uh, up and down. And as you can uh, see, the expected value of the uncertain is uh, uh, 35 cents per uh, one. Uh, however, we think, we predicted the uncertain will be even more motivating than the higher value, which is getting 50 cents on uh, every uh, one. And this is indeed what we uh, found uh, where uh, participants were climbing more and uh, stairs when they had the opportunity to win a lottery every time they did it and get the uncertain uh, reward. Uh, we uh, had another group of people predict how many uh, uh, stairs they will uh, climb, how many round trips they uh, uh, will make. And they predicted that they are going to work harder when the incentive uh, was uh, high and uh, certain compared to the other uh, conditions, uh, suggesting that people fail to predict that uncertainty will be exciting and increase their uh, uh, motivation. 
And there were two points that were interesting for us in, in that, uh, that book. Uh, one is, uh, what is it that people fail to predict, and what is it they don't get? And the other one is, how easy uh, it is to uh, get people to do something that is so extrinsically motivated, is doing something that is unpleasant in order to uh, complete an experiment uh, with added excitement, okay, with added uh, intrinsic uh, uh, benefits. And so in the studies that I want to discuss with you uh, uh, today, uh, I'm going to show that there is a shift in the way that people give to intrinsic incentives. They think that these incentives are more important, they give them great weight when they are inside of the activity than uh, before or after than when they are outside of the activity, which could explain what is it that predictors missed in our uh, initial uh, experiment, right? they were outside of the activity. And I'm going to uh, show that uh, uh, this is not just about the value that people give to these activities, it's not just about uh, importance, uh, it also has implications for how much people persist on their uh, activities such that they persist more based on intrinsic incentives and uh, on their uh, regret such that people are more likely to uh, uh, regret and uh, uh, foregoing activities that offer intrinsic incentives while they are engaging in these activities. Now why is that uh, uh, such a uh, uh, shift? Uh, well, we know from self-control research that uh, uh, temptations, these immediate rewards are uh, mainly powerful, mainly valuable when we approach them. Okay, so this is one line of evidence suggesting that these immediate rewards, we mainly care about them right now in the moment than from uh, at some uh, distance. And there was also research on the equity gap suggesting that people actually don't quite predict how strong they are going to experience immediate uh, rewards and uh, uh, how strong they are going to experience anything. Uh, uh, basically, now if I think that my experience is not going to be very strong, then it's likely that I'm also not going to value it much. I'm not going to think that it's very important to take my experience into account if I don't know how strong and overwhelming uh, this experience uh, uh, will be. So based on these two lines of research, we thought that Intrinsic incentives is something that you really value when you're doing the action more than uh, before or after. Okay, and we predict that for evaluation, that is how much people think that intrinsic incentives are very important uh, for them when they are doing process before or after, how much they persist and how much they will uh, regret uh, foregoing either one of these incentives. So here is uh, uh, my first example for measuring the importance of intrinsic incentives. What we did here was uh, uh, coaching people at uh, our uh, local uh, gym and asked them about uh, a bunch of uh, incentives, how important they are uh, for them. Uh, so for intrinsic incentives, how important is it to work out is enjoyable, it's fun, it's relaxing, it's stress relieving and so on. And for extrinsic incentives, it's how important is that your workout, your workout helps you keep in shape, improves your health, uh, you become stronger as a result, and, and so on. Okay, and they do it twice. They, they do it at the gym right there when we approach them, and then uh, a week later, okay, we uh, uh, email them and get the responses. And what you can see that there is really nothing with extrinsic incentives. It's important for me to exercise in order to keep in shape when I'm at the gym and when I'm home a week later. Uh, however, for the intrinsic incentives, they are more important when I'm at the gym. They are not so important uh, later on when I'm at home. Now, this could be because there is an effect for the immediate or because there is an effect for the delay. Okay, so we don't really know where this difference uh, comes from. It could be that uh, people exaggerate the importance of these incentives when they are uh, here and now or under uh, uh, estimate them uh, when uh, uh, they are out of the activity. Uh, to uh, uh, explore this difference, we added a condition which is uh, after a uh, pursuit. So we were basically interested in, so to show that people care about intrinsic incentives now compared to after I did it and compared to before I'm going to uh, do it again. And what we 
be always asking people about their jobs, and we recorded people who had a job in the past, um, and almost everybody, not almost everybody, planned to have another uh, job in the future, so they have past jobs and, and, and future uh, jobs. And this time we are asking about things such as uh, for intrinsic incentives, finding a job that is within your skill set, that people that work treat you well, that is easy to get along with them, uh, that you like them, and so on. And extrinsic incentives is compensation, pay raises, healthcare benefits, and so on. And uh, these are just examples of them all. Okay? And uh, what we find is that for the intrinsic incentives, that is doing something that is fun with people that I like, that's very important for my present job okay, right now. Okay? It wasn't so important for my past job, and it's not very important for my future job. Okay? So when I apply for a job, it's really not about the people. Okay? When I go to job, my job today, it is about people. And it was also interesting uh, that we got this, uh, we do not expect it for the extrinsic incentives. Usually we, we get it to be flat, but here actually people said that for their next job they uh, care more about money and uh, health benefits and so on, and the present and uh, the previous uh, job. But really, this is our effect. Okay, uh, so uh, what, uh, um, what that implies for, for persistence? Uh, here we uh, created a lab task and we uh, asked people to uh, either predict how long they are going to persist on this task or that we actually measure their persistence and we manipulated whether the task was intrinsically uh, uh, motivating and whether it was interesting versus boring and the pay, whether the task was extrinsically uh, motivating. And when we look at predictors, we find a main effect for pay such that when people predict how long they are going to do something, they basically tell us that they are going to do it for a longer time if it, pay, if it pays more. Okay, so there, there is no effect for whether it's interesting or not. I will do more trials with your experiment if you pay me more per trial. Okay, when we look at their persistence, it was actually here. No effect whatsoever for how much we pay. They are basically doing more trials if they are doing something fun than if they are doing something boring. Okay? So again, we find this difference between what people predict and, and what guides their choice and what they actually call for in their uh, presence. And uh, the president accepted that here it translates into greater persistence. Okay? Uh, we also wanted to, uh, to see what are the implications for uh, regret, and so we uh, uh, here created uh, this trade-off. So we had a choice between two tasks, one that uh, uh, is boring, it was listening to an alarm clock, the other one which is more interesting, listening to the song Hey Jude, and the boring task pays more than uh, uh, the interesting uh, uh, task. Uh, we purposely designed this task such that in free choice, most of the people in our sample chose the uh, boring uh, end task, the uh, extrinsic uh, end task. So, notice that this is the first time that I have a trade off. So far, they were probably manipulated. Now there is a trade off, and most people go for the extrinsic. They give me the, uh, another quarter when uh, they are listening to an alarm clock. Uh, however, uh, just when they finish this task, we uh, uh, ask them whether they regret their choice. Let me step back. One group of real choosers chose the uh, extrinsic task. Another group of people who were not really choosing, they just thought that they were choosing meaning. We highly recommend that they would choose either the extrinsic or the intrinsic task based on that random allocation. And they all followed our recommendation, so they thought that they were choosing, but they weren't really. And uh, those people who uh, chose Okay, the extrinsic task we granted it just as they were uh, done with it more than those who chose the intrinsic uh, task. Uh, basically, suggesting that people are choosing something that they uh, regret later. Okay, I've got the sign to uh, get going. Uh, so, in the next uh, five minutes, I would like to uh, show you some uh, data for how, how we can use these findings to. Uh, 
uh, get people to use the experience in order to uh, uh, pursue uh, long-term uh, goals. And the idea here is that knowing that what we do is largely driven by the experience at the moment, by the immediate uh, reward, uh, we can use that to uh, uh, improve uh, persistence on, uh, uh, on long-term self-control uh, goals. Uh, in particular, we can uh, get people to attend to immediate benefits or to include immediate benefits in a way to speak to uh, long-term uh, goals. Now, before we, we did any manipulation, we just wanted to see that indeed immediate uh, uh, rewards uh, for this persistence on long-term goals. And so we did a couple of studies where we just measured people's intrinsic interest, extrinsic uh, uh, interest, and how long they persist. Uh, it's hard to read the details there, but it's basically uh, students going to the library, which students don't usually go to the library for their intrinsic interest. <laughs> they go there because they have to study. We ask them how enjoyable are the materials and how uh, important are the materials. Now you would think that if you do that because it's important, therefore importance should predict how much time you spend there. And no, it's enjoyment that predicts. Uh, that and you know initially when we got these results we thought maybe there was just no bias and important just everybody says it's very important and therefore you don't get that to predict anything there are no differences in bias okay there are bias in importance which is similar to the bias in enjoyment but enjoyment predicts how long they stay in the library uh, we did the same uh, at the gym uh, we asked the uh, people as they were entering the gym how fun it is for them to exercise, how useful it is for them to exercise. Again, an activity that is explicitly motivated. How fun you find exercising for this persistence more than uh, how useful uh, it is, uh, uh, even though there was similar bounds in both uh, uh, questions. So how, how do we uh, use it? Um, well, we did a study in which we asked people to uh, uh, choose between uh, uh, carrots and liquids. Uh, and, and the nice thing about this choice is that it's not really uh, a choice in, in the sense that no one likes liquids. Now, it's possible that there is someone here who likes this candy, okay? but it's, uh, it's so unpopular, at least at the University of Chicago, that, that it's wonder why it's even being so. <laughs> Three people chose, okay? so no one likes it. <laughs> However, we uh, can ask people to choose based on taste or based on health. In both cases, they're going to choose the carrots, but those who choose based on taste eat more than those who choose based on health. Okay? So basically, if you're doing it for the intrinsic reasons, then you're enjoying it more and do more than if you're choosing it for extrinsic reasons. <laughs> The person that waves the time just left. Yes, so I know right. that. Yes. Yeah, so I, 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 I assume I'm a man. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> My external control is not here. Yeah. I'm supposed to exercise self control now. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, here we wanted to add a uh, control group, basically, not telling uh, anybody uh, uh, know how to choose. And uh, now, uh, here people were choosing between. Uh, Organic and non-organic carrots. Okay, so uh, again, most people choose organic carrots. There is nothing to, to lose by that. Uh, however, they either choose it, choose the healthier option or the tastier uh, option, or that we don't tell them how to choose. And the, the people that were choosing based on taste uh, ate more. Um, let me skip back and that and uh, uh, say that uh, uh, we are. We went to the uh, gym and we asked people to uh, either choose the fun exercise or the effective uh, exercise. Now there was a lot of work there to ensure that these exercises that they choose are equally difficult and they are all on their plan so that uh, uh, real gym goers, unlike me, have a list of things that they plan to do today when they go to the gym. So it's part of that list. And they are doing more when we ask them to choose uh, something that is fun versus something that is useful, they're doing more sets, they're doing more uh, uh, reps. Uh, just before I uh, finish, uh, you know, you can ask whether people know that. So, you know, if you are trying to motivate yourself, uh, how do you, do you do that? 
Uh, it doesn't seem like that. We ask people how, how do you plan to motivate yourself to exercise? So just building on the previous result that they presented, just free response. What would you do to motivate yourself to work out? And when we coded these responses, we find that 70% of the people who are talking about reminding myself that it will help me keep in shape, that I will look good, that I will be healthy, and then so on, uh, basically referring to extrinsic. Uh, only 26% uh, 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 were talking about uh, trying to have fun with it, trying to relax with it, with me with the body intrinsic. Okay, so uh, attending to uh, intrinsic incentives uh, increases uh, uh, persistence, uh, can uh, motivate uh, uh, long term uh, goals. Um, the, it's something that people don't predict very well because it's mainly in the here and now, right now, that they care about their uh, experience. And we can uh, harness experience to uh, increase persistence and by that, in a way, bypass the need for self-control. Okay, if I'm doing it for the immediate reward, I'm not really interested in self-control, uh, which uh, uh, means it might be uh, easier. Okay, thank you.